Good morning. Uh, hopefully you've had a great week, a great weekend, and now starting off the first of the week in an excellent way. Busy day today, a lot of things going on. We got a lot of folks getting ready for VBS. We've got a lot of folks that are getting ready for other activities within our education department. And folks, I wanna remind you that immediately after services, we're having a, a open house. And if you would like to see what's being done up in our education program, particularly our, our young people's classes, our graded classes, we're going to have that open house. You'll see a lot of things that have been done in the last several months, not just weeks, but months and maybe even a couple of years now, folks. But if you would like to see that after services tonight, this morning, see me in the foyer, and I'd like to just give you a tour, talk about what's going to be taking places in the rooms. If you can't make it this morning, then I understand. We're going to do it again this evening before services, around 5, I believe is what time we said we'd meet. So meet us here about 5 o'clock, and we'll do it this evening as well. And I want you to see what's going on. I want you to get excited about what's taking place, not just in our children's classes, which is where we're starting, but things that we're going to be doing throughout the whole education program. So be a part of that. If you'd like to see what's going on upstairs, we'll see you after services or this evening. Folks, in the field of counseling and psychotherapy, there are several different types of therapeutic approaches in offering aid and help to others. One of those approaches is called the cognitive behavioral approach. Now, some of y'all know what this is. Basically speaking, the directives used in this type of therapy are based from the idea of teaching someone what is appropriate behavior and then they can adjust or change their behavior to fit what they've learned. And this is a very effective approach in helping individuals, say, struggle with life problems, with anxieties, with issues in life. Now, this same type of approach is greatly used within the education field. The simple teaching of a professor or a teacher in a classroom is the cognitive approach of instruction within that classroom. Now that is being challenged quite a bit right now. Most people say that cognitive approach in teaching is the most effective way in teaching, but I've been reading some things lately about technology and they've even come up with another concept of teaching called the technological perspective. And studies are showing that in the classroom, technology is helping people learn, retain, and remember and that's particularly for our younger folks, which is interesting. Folks in our new Bible class program, we're planning on using the cognitive approach in teaching mixed with the other approaches because not everyone learns the same. Plus retention is increased when you use the many different approaches. We understand. We understand the importance of teaching the truth of God's word Paul relates that our faith is developed by the message of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we understand. We understand the importance of properly teaching and learning from the divine message of God. So from many of the opportunities that we have in reading, in studying God's Word, many have come to know a tremendous amount of Bible knowledge. I've always marveled. I always marveled at those that have memorized the whole Bible. That is something that I don't think this brain can do, just to be honest. But I know individuals in which you could simply just offer a book, <coughs> chapter, and verse, and they could immediately immediately quote that specific verse. I've known individuals that knew the Bible, but also I've known individuals that knew the Bible from cover to cover, but they never put into practice what it taught. In other words, <clears throat> they knew the Word of God. However, they never translated it into obedience. It is this that I want to talk about this morning. The cognitive gap 
that gap between knowledge and knowing versus practicing and following. Therefore, the title, Do You Have a Cognitive Gap? Do you have the gap between knowing God's Word and following God's Word? So, the purpose of our lesson this morning (coughs) is to look at several examples in Scripture. Several examples where we know what God has said and what God has maybe even commanded. But are we doing? Are we doing what deity directed us to do? Folks, it ought to be our desire to close that gap, to close that gap between our knowledge of God's Word and following God's Word. And remember that Jesus related, if you truly love me, what will you do? Keep my commandments. John chapter 14, verse 15. And John 15, verse 14. So let's get into our lesson this morning. I've got just a few examples that I want you to consider. Am I really doing what I know what the Bible teaches? First example I want to offer, <clears throat> the Great Commission. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you even to the end of the age. Amen. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. <clears throat> and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Folks, I do not believe that the Lord's commission of going and teaching the gospel and baptizing those that, that believe is that difficult to understand. We know what God expects from us. Matthew's account helps us to understand that the disciples were, fo- were to follow the teachings of the apostles that were directed to fulfill the same commission. Teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. Folks, we do see the apostles. We see them as well as other, others fulfilling the Lord's commission. Acts chapter 2, the apostles began the work that the Lord directed by preaching to the Jews on the day of Pentecost. Later they began to travel to other places, other nations, teaching the words of truth as Jesus had commanded. And we see Paul continuing the commission he instructed Timothy to obey. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2, preach the word, be ready in season, out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. And it was not very long after the Lord's commission was given that the early church had fulfilled, folks, their obligation. Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every uh, creature under heaven, which... I, Paul, became a minister. Did you hear that? Before the end of the first century, folks, every creature on the earth had heard the message of Christ. Folks, truly we understand the need. We understand the importance of teaching those that are outside of of Christ and lost in their sins. We understand that they need the gospel of Christ so that they can have the opportunity of salvation and everlasting life. Remember that without faith it's impossible to please, uh, please God, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. And as we earlier said, faith comes by hearing the Word of God, Romans chapter 10 verse 17. We know the Great Commission. We recognize the need to teach others. Are you practicing it? Are you doing it? I'm so proud to be a part of of Washington Avenue because we do understand the importance of teaching others. Our leaders are very concerned about spreading the truth in other areas and also even here in Evansville. Our leadership not only ensures that we're taught to be evangelistic, but they themselves are evangelistic. They give us opportunities to be as well. Currently within our education program, we have a class in which the majority 
of what's being taught relates to evangelism. And I have a good number in that class. We're learning how to go, how to teach others about Jesus. Folks, we have the responsibility. <coughs> we have the responsibility to constantly be looking for those in whom we can teach the gospel to. Yet do we have a cognitive gap? Do we have a gap between knowing the Great Commission and indeed following it? Second example I want us to look at this morning, which we learn again that we need to close that cognitive gap relates to our own personal Bible study. <coughs> Excuse me. Knowing that I ought to study and actually studying it are two different things, aren't they? Apostle Paul directed Timothy to be diligent, be diligent worker, understanding and rightly dividing the message of Christ. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Folks, from this passage we gain understanding. Understanding why it's important to study the message of God. First, we recognize it's a, a direct command. We need to be doing this. We understand that by knowing God's message, then we gain God's approval. We also understand that through God's message, we gain truth, spiritual truth. So the Bible teaches us the importance of personal study, yet we must be willing to study. There are several religious groups that teach that common man is unable to understand the Bible, that only the elite should study Scripture, and then they'll tell the rest of us how we're supposed to live. But folks, the Scripture gives examples. <clears throat> it gives examples to us concerning how we as individuals are responsible in and of ourselves in studying and knowing the message of deity. Acts chapter 17, verse 11, these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, talking about the Bereans. They were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the Word of God with all readiness and searched the Scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Daily they studied. Daily they search the Scriptures. Folks, we need to develop a similar study habit. No matter who presents a sermon, who presents a Bible class, we have the responsibility to search the Scriptures to make sure what is being taught is indeed God's truth. So we must understand. We must know the importance of getting into the Word of God, getting into it and studying it diligently. Yet how often... Don't raise your hand. How often do you really get into God's Word? We know that we ought to be studying. We know we ought to be gleaming from the precious Word of God. We know what a wonderful opportunity that we can have it in so many different ways before us. But when was the last time you opened your Bible? When was the last time you read it and you studied from it? Friends, examine yourself. Is there a gap between knowing that you ought to be studying and actually opening up God's Word every day and gleaming from its precious message? Number three, is there a cognitive gap between knowing the need to come to worship and being together in the assembly? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more you see the day approaching. <coughs> Folks, notice from this verse, we are again directed to assemble together. And this verse also helps us to understand the purpose for our coming. We, we know we, to, we are to come together to worship. But we also meet together to exhort and to encourage one another. Thank you, Jerry. You're a good man. I'll tell Mary that as well. 
Folks, we know the need to come and worship together. Some hold to the idea that missing the assembly of the church, eh, it's not that big of a deal. And I believe in more recent years, such a thought has grown stronger due to technology, the ability to watch worship from home. Now, folks, those that are on live stream, first of all, we're thrilled that you are with us this morning. We're thrilled that you have been able to be a part of our services through our live stream or through YouTube later. First of all, we thank you. We thank you for being with us today. There's a reason for why you're unable to be with us. Possibly sickness, possibly a stuffy nose, possibly some other reason that is outside of your control, then understand we're thrilled you're with us through live stream. That's what live stream is all about and we are praying for you this morning. Yet if you're home today because you simply decided not to come, not to come this morning, folks, I ask a question. Is there a cognitive gap there? There's more to coming together than just simply physically being here. Deity related that the coming together physically is to exhort one another, to encourage one another. Folks, if you're not coming, then you will not receive the encouragement and the support of your physical family. Plus, you cannot offer your love and your encouragement to the rest of us. Folks, we're a family. We're a family that desires and even needs to be together. We need to support and, and the love due to the difficulties and the struggles that we face in this life. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Folks, we need to be here so we can help one another. John chapter 13 verse 14, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Folks, if you're home this morning when you could have been here, you're missing our encouragement. You're missing our love. I've spoken with some of you that due to illness, due to sicknesses, you've not been able to attend. And I appreciate it greatly when I talk to you, you talk about, oh, I'm always on live stream though. I'm always watching. Awesome. But I've also had you tell me, I miss so much being there. I miss the personal touch. I miss that. That's so important to me. And I need it. Folks, we need the love. We need the encouragement that others offer us. Yet we also need to express our love and our encouragement to them. Paul understands the need to be with God's people and even made extra efforts to make sure he was with his brothers and sisters when they assembled together. Acts chapter 20, verses 6 through 7 but we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and in five days joined them at Troas, where we stayed seven days. Now, now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message till midnight. Folks, Paul planned his traveling. He planned his mission journeys and his travelings around the first day of the week so that he could be in worship. He could be with his spiritual family. He recognized the need for that encouragement. He recognized the comfort that comes from the assembling together as brothers and sisters in Christ. So what is your practice? I'm thankful you're here today. I know I'm preaching to the choir right now. But have we ever had that point in our lives where we thought it was okay just to miss? You know that the Bible directs us to assemble together and worship so that we honor God, we worship God, so that we can encourage one another. Yet is there a gap in your thinking, a cognitive gap to where you think it's okay not to be here? Make sure that you attend the worship services and attend any other time possible in which you can be together with God's family. Number four, 
Another example of knowing truth, yet are we truly practicing truth, relates to hospitality. Do we show hospitality to others, to one another? First Peter chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, And above all things have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Folks, we know that, that the elders, the leadership uh, is supposed to be hospitable. First Timothy 3, verse 2, Titus chapter 1, verse 8, yet, yet it is often said that many of the qualifications for elders are simply Christian practices that they should have already developed in their lives. Being hospitable. Folks, it simply means I am giving to being gracious. I am given to being generous. I am given to being open and accepting others. Many think the hospitality is, hey, come to my house, invite others over, treat them with respect and kindness, and that is hospitable. But there's other forms of hospitality that we can show that, that is still demonstrating our generosity, our openness, our hospitality. Folks, through, through our agape program, program that Jeff does so often, we demonstrate hospitality by taking meals to the sick or those that have lost loved ones. That's showing hospitality. You can be hospitable by leading and supporting our, our wedding showers, our baby showers, and so forth, and even visits, visiting those that are struggling, whether at home or in the hospital. Remember what James chapter 1, verse 27 says, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the world. Folks, all these are different ways to show hospitality by, that is directed by God for us to do. Yet is there a gap? Do we have a gap in our thinking? Do you find it easy to be hospitable and visit others? Folks, we know what we ought to do, yet sometimes making that extra effort, we often fall short. I am thankful again for our leadership at Washington Avenue who recognize how important it is to visit to show that hospitality. And Rodney Seals, again, is, is showing hospitality to our visitors and new members, and I'm sure that he would be glad to involve you so that that gap does not exist between knowing and doing. I know many of you that make visits on your own. I know that you do not want to be recognized for doing such, yet I know you're making a difference. I know that souls are being saved because of your, your actions of hospitality and love. Friends, let us do more than just know the importance of being hospitable. Let us make sure we demonstrate such in our lives. Folks, I guarantee we could go on with this lesson with more and more and more examples in Scripture that are directed to us. Is there a gap? in what you know is right and in doing it. We could go through the, the Christian graces. We could go through the fruits of the Spirit and go on for another hour. And you're saying, no, Alan, I want the open house for the education department. <laughs> Folks, our scripture reading this morning teaches us to do more than just hear and know. Our scripture reading this morning teaches us to do. To do what we know as Christians we ought to be doing. James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, He's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks in the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Folks, let's be doers of the word. This morning our challenge 
is to work in closing that cognitive gap between our knowledge and putting God's word into practice. Jesus related that his words are by which we live our lives from. John 6, verse 63, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are of life. Folks, we also know God has related to us that we, what we need for life and what we need for life to come. John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I, Jesus, came that you may have life and that you might have it more abundantly. We know that Christ offers eternal life. However, are you only hearing his plead? Are you just hearing his plead? Or are you accepting his grace and mercy through faith and obedience? As Christians, have you been struggling with sin? You know what God expects, yet you've allowed that gap to exist between knowing how to live godly and doing what is godly. Folks, Christ desires greatly that you indeed honor him. And this morning, if you need to repent as a Christian, we encourage you to do so. The Lord, folks, is always anxious to forgive. He's always willing for you to repent. At the same time, maybe you're not a Christian. You know what you ought to be doing and obeying. You knowing that, that accepting the grace of God is necessary, but yet you just haven't done it. You've been putting it off. Why not bring your knowledge to its completion by obeying the Lord and accepting his offering of salvation? Come this morning, repenting of your sins, confessing of your faith, being baptized so that your sins are washed away and continue then for the rest of your life in living your commitment to Jesus Christ. Or possibly you need and desire to just know more. Maybe you don't have that gap because you're still trying to learn. Folks, we're willing to help you. We're willing to assist you in Bible study and looking into God's Word and learning what Christ desires of you and then following it. We're here for you this morning. We're here to assist you. Those on live stream, you can contact us. There's information at the end of the service on how you can reach out to us. But folks, if you're here in the auditorium this morning and you desire to be the doer for God, the doer for the Lord, becoming a Christian, recommitting your life in repentance, don't hesitate. Come forward as we together stand and we sing.